So in this film, we're going to be looking at uh, fixing a low quality image a little using the neural filters. Um, it's not a perfect fix, but if you've only got a low resolution image and you need to have a little bit of better quality, then this is a, a, a kind of a, a good technique to use anyway. <clears throat> so um, basically, if I uh, just cancel this for a minute and we open up um, the image, we'll, we'll kind of go from scratch with another photograph so you can see the problems. Um, but I've got a low resolution file here. And the first thing uh, we usually do, as you know, is kind of duplicate the uh, original kind of uh, photograph, no matter what. But in this case, we're duplicated it, and then we're just going to come straight up into fill, filter, neural filters. And we're going to make use of the JPEG artifacts. And um, this is done on machine, so um, it's a lot quicker than working on the cloud. And what we can do now is basically help the image, the artifacts within the image smooth out a little bit. This is a really good fix in poor portraiture. Uh, not so much good with the likes of landscape photography, especially where you'll have banding in the likes of uh, perhaps um, merge soft elements like skies. Uh, you might have issues here, but because we've got good definition in a face, uh, with contrast there, you can see already what it's done. It's basically um, helped the actual face. You've got options here for low, medium and high. Probably if you're anything and you are trying to fix it, you're going to be working on high resolution or a higher strength, I should say, more than anything else. So if you just press OK onto that one, I've set it to output to a smart filter. Um, but you can actually do it to current layer, new layer, new layer mast, et cetera, yes, even a new document. So I'm just going to press OK. And one of the reasons is that if we open up as a new smart filter layer, as it were, um, basically it's going to create a um, mask for a straightaway one that we can kind of apply, which we will really want to do in hair um, because the one thing that this does at times it can really, really soften or kind of lose some of the detail. So you can see if I'm kind of just knocking that on and off, you can see the difference in the low resolution. So let's uh, quickly um, show you how we destroy an image. Um, so let's open up the raw file first. Um, do you know what? I'm just going to delete these ones. I don't need those at all. And let's open up the raw file. I'm really not going to do anything to the raw file. Uh, we're not here to actually do the workflow today. You know, there's some elements here in fixing the kind of the glow on the skin and so on. Um, however, let's just open this straight up within Photoshop. Okay. And now at this stage, um, if we've done some work on the image, blah, 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 then we'll usually be saving this file as either a TIFF or a PSD file, especially if we've got multiple layers. A TIFF and a PSD file, remember, are a non-destructive file. However, they can still be scaled in size and they will lose information if you scale in size before you save and things. Um, we're just going to save as a JPEG, which is by design a destructive save. OK, um, and so just be aware of that. However, most of my career, almost all of my images, except for commercial, are basically saved as an output of JPEG 10. OK, so let's save this file. OK, so we're just going to go to File, Save As. We're in the fol folder called Fix Low Quality Images, and we're just going to call this one um, so we know it is Original JPEG Saved from Raw. OK, so we know exactly what that is. I usually have a shortcut, which is JFR. Uh, JPEG from RAW. OK, so I'm just going to press save. Now, the one thing we want to do, as I mentioned, when I'm saving things, I want to make sure I save on 10. Um, 11 and 12 is there for you. I found no real dif uh, difference. So 10 is what I've opted for, for pretty much well over a decade and a half now kind of thing. And it works well for me. Um, pressing OK. So that has now saved that image. All right, let's just close that one down. Let's op open it back up again so we know we're working on this file. OK, so there's the raw file. There's the XMP information that uh, uh, um, goes side by side with the raw file. However, this is the one that we saved. So this is the one we're going to open up. If I double click it, it'll open straight up into Photoshop. 
and we've basically got our image here. So let's um, save it as a low resolution file first before we then actually reopen it again and resize it and save it low as well, just so we can see the difference in qualities, yes? So we're just gonna go into Shift Control um, S um, and that brings up the save as command. And I'm gonna do original JPEG and this is low res. Okay, and we're going to press save. I'm going to reduce this down now to just for exaggeration five. Okay, five tends to be a really good size if you're sending lots of images over e uh, email to the likes of press or magazines and so on because they're printing small images and so on. It's a really good way to do it. So if you haven't resized your photograph and you're looking for a quick upload, then around about a JPEG five is a usual kind of size in that people use. Um, however, for me, I want to actually send them in a higher quality, so I'll send them as a download file, as it were. Anyway, press OK. Now, um, we pretty much won't see a difference uh, of this image yet, but what it's done, it's basically looked at all the pixels around and thrown them away because it's averaging out colors and, and contrast and so on. And so it's like, well, that one looks like this, this one. So I don't need that. Let's throw throw that away. So that's really what it's doing in the saving of the resolution size. Okay, so let's kind of throw that one away again. Let's close that down for now. And we'll go back and file and open. Remember, we've now got a raw file. We've got the original JPEG save from raw. And we've got this original JPEG low resolution. I'm going to open up the original JPEG save from raw just so you know, I'm not cheating here. And we're just gonna go into image and we're gonna go into uh, image size and let's make it 1200 pixels, pressing okay. So this is kind of quite typical in social me media size and so on and so on, yeah. Um, so now we'll save, save it. So if you are going to have a low resolution file, this isn't a, technically a low resolution file, it is, but it's all depending on how the quality we save as, as far as I'm concerned, when we really start to destroy an image. We have um, kind of thrown away the information um, because we just kind of said, well, instead of being, say, a 5,000 pixel image, you're now going to be a 1,200. So basically, we've, we've resized it down. It's scaled down uh, as far as the photograph is concerned, and we have lost quality. But now to really lose quality, if we just go shift Control s again, and we basically do the, uh, let's do 1,200 low res. Okay, so this means 1200 pixels and we're going to save it as a low res file. Remember, it's not until we press the save command, it brings up the dialog box for the JPEG options here. At this point, I'm going to destroy it by coming down to five. I'm going to press OK. So we have uh, open, we technically have four images, the raw file, the uh, JPEG from raw, a original JPEG as a low resolution in quality of save, and we have a 1200 save size. So if we open all three of those, we're just going to ignore the raw, and we, op we open them up. So straight away now, um, if we're looking at, this is the, uh, what is it? The original JPEG save from raw. Okay, so this is our JFR. So it's technically got all the information of the raw file had, except we've saved it as a JPEG. Some of the pixels will have been thrown away and so on with it. Then we go to the um, low res of the same file. Let's just double click on the magnifying glass. That brings up to 100%. Let's go back in and do exactly the same here. Yep, so we're working at 100%. And we can see the difference between the images. It's hardly noticeable as such, um, but there is some loss in detail on this right-hand eye and so on with it. Okay, it's there, but really it's very, very similar. So because we didn't resize the image, all we've got now is a higher of a, a, con a contrast, so more whites, more blacks, less information between because it's looking at the artifacts and throwing bits away and so on with it. The real one to look at and what this technique is really designed for is the um, 
uh, low res, so like it's a social media image and so on. So you can see if I double click on the, mag the magnifying tool, it doesn't enlarge it anymore because it's at full 100%. So the only way for me to enlarge it now is to obviously uh, grow it through the magnification, just zooming in as it were. So we can see already we have totally destroyed this image. So for us to help the image in some way, um, we'll duplicate the layer, Control J, then we'll come up into Filter, Neural Filters. And uh, remember, the uh, Neural fil uh, Filters need to be downloaded um, before you can basically u uh, use them with the majority of them, okay? So we're just going to choose the Restoration, and we're going to click on to JPEG Artifacts Removal. So this is what we saw. Remember, it's processing on your machine. So it's going to take a little bit of a time, but quicker than if it was in a cloud. And I've already got it set to high. So basically, if we look at the before and after, it's done a pretty good job. OK, we have helped an image come back to life, as it were. So then um, what we're doing, though, at times, we'll keep on the smart, fil smart filter there. Um, because what we're doing as well is kind of throwing away the detail of the hair. That's why I chose the smart filter to begin with, because it comes up with a mask. So if I select onto the mask here and I hit B for brush, yeah, D for default, X to put black on top, then I can actually go across to the hair and I can actually bring back some of the um, artifacts that we were smoothing out which technically bring back the texture. What I don't want to do is go near the face if possible. I want to actually bring um, highlights and blacks and so on back um, to kind of allow us to at least have a slightly sharper hair than we would if we just allowed the actual um, neural filter to do its job and things. OK, so just go through that. And then obviously, as far as this hair is concerned, we'd really need a smaller brush. And I would just work on the highlighter areas rather than the whole thing to fake bringing back some of the detail of the hair there. All right. So what we've now got, if we look at it, is this is the image as it kind of came in. And there's our image kind of just helped a little bit more. You could go in and say, OK, let's have a look at the eyes. Does it help if I bring the eyes back? Does it help if I bring the lips back? But at the end of the day, what we're doing is trying to recover an image that has been destroyed or lost. So in other words, if you've only got a social media or perhaps you've had to resize images for your web your website, your drive has gone down or whatever it is, then this is a perfect way for you to at least make use of some of the low-res low res images that you've only got left and things. In the same way, this is the low resolution, um, but we haven't resized. So this is still back to the 5760 widest length, as it were, of the original JPEG, um, but it has been saved as the JPEG 5. So let's just see the same technique, Control j back up into fill filter, into neural filters. Once more, clicking on to the JPEG artifact. This is going to take a lot longer to process now because it is a much bigger file with much more information. And remember what Photoshop is doing is basically looking at all of those pixels and kind of redesigning them and everything else. So I'll quickly fast forward for you because this is going to take about uh, three minutes for it to actually do its job by the looks of it. I bet you're so pleased that you didn't have to wait for the four minutes like me. So um, as we can now see, um, if we hit the um, before and after, you can see what it's doing. OK, what it's done now is over sharpened it, but it has recovered quite a lot. This is uh, so let's open it again in um, Photoshop with that smart filter in, in place. So if we just switch it off again, let's come back in. 
we can see what it's done. It's, um, in fact, softened the skin more because it's trying to get rid of all the kind of the bits and the shapes and so on. But in this case, what it's done, it it's uh, helped the hair to kind of bring back some of the detail in just a touch as well with it. But if you were by mistake, let's say you've done a job, you've shot on camera, you only shoot JPEG, and even though you were shooting as the large file size, you've set it on kind of, you know, a small kind of save by mistake, um, then this is one route that you might be able to actually help you recover the image and things really. So if you shot a low resolution file by mistake, then you could have a little play around with the neural filters to actually see if that really, really helps and things. Um, but as is, you can see the original file is pretty good in its own right. I think if we're looking at the um, the hair here and the actual creasing in the, the mouth, if we uh, then actually switch on what the neural fill filter tried to do, you can see all it's done is add like a skin smoothing effect across it. Now that might suit some of your images. Uh, it definitely has taken out some of the color contamination of the artifacts down on the, the texture of the skin down here, um, as far as actually on the chin is concerned. So uh, again, there are elements that you might think this is a good fix. Um, and you can see what it's done is, again, fixed a little bit of the artifacts underneath the eye there from the low resolution as well. So it definitely has a use, but realistically, like I was showing to you right in the beginning, um, this is really what it's designed for. It's kind of looking at a very low resolution of a, a kind of an image that is almost unusable as such, and then basically using that neural fil filter to apply a smoothing to the artifacts or the kind of the, the blocking actually within the face.